Greetings. This is Doc Ock coming at you live and direct from Black Facts Headquarters Central here in Kent, Ohio, with our final installment on Garrett Augustus Morgan. Yes, we're going to be reading a little bit more about him tonight. As you know, this is the beginning of the month, so as always, we're going to ask you to do a little something extra tonight. Besides giving us a like if you're watching on Facebook and a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube, we also like you to go ahead and make a donation to Black Facts Educational Research Incorporated. Now, that's a lot to say, so we're going to break it down for you. You can do it at our website, B-L-A-K-F-A-C-T-S dot O-R-G. You can just go right below this um Look up either above or below any of our live streams and you'll find a description. And when you go there, you'll see you can make a donation there. Okay. There'll be plenty of other places you can make donations at too. We got links set up all over the place. If you can't find us on your mobile, go ahead and click your notifications and you get a drop down list and you'll see we're on the drop down list as well. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and dispel any notion that we are just over here dealing with a potion. We're going to put some things in motion that should be um, good for you from now until whenever. Just like Garrett Morgan his and his um, fire and smoke safety hood and his automated or automatic traffic signal. Both of those things are still being used to this day or some variation of them because he actually ended up selling the traffic light to General Electric, which was the um, baby of Thomas Edison. Okay, Thomas Edison started GE, so that was his corporation at one point. I don't know if he was still um, in charge of GE when... Um, Garrett Morgan sold the uh, traffic light to GE, but it's quite possible he was still involved with the business. But you know how these businesses are. People found them, sell them, and move on with their money. So I'm not sure exactly how that all works out into the timeline. But for the sake of uh, brevity, let's go ahead and read tonight. We're going to be reading tonight from one of our old standard books, the American Book of values. Yes, we're going to come out of this. We're going to return to this book here because there is a segment in here on Garrett Morgan that I thought would be very good for us to read tonight. Of course, I didn't mark the page for some unknown, ungodly reason. And now I've got to go back and find the page again. So let's see if I can find a page. I better put on my glasses while I'm looking. Uh, yes, because that'll have me cooking a whole lot quicker. Ah, and there we go. Let's see where we are today. There we go. All the way back here. I love this book. This book has so much information. It's just chalk. Oh, and as a matter of fact, what do they? what is the title of the article? No, this is the title of the article right before the one on... Um, Garrett Morgan, and it's called the Black Edison. And in this case, they're talking that case they're talking about Granville T. Woods. We're going to be reading from a, a article entitled "From Straightening Hair to Saving Lives," Garrett Morgan. And here we go. Whoops, wrong direction. Go back that way. There we go. Garrett Morgan, the man. Garrett Morgan, born 1877, passed on into the land of the ancestors in 1963, launched a career of invention by accidentally discovering, discovering hair straightener. He developed an early version of the gas mask and, no, he developed a safety hood because technically it definitely was not a gas mask, although that's a common misconception a lot of people have. It was a fire and smoke safety hood. That's what he called it. That's how it worked. That's what it did. It would not protect you from 
gas because gases are heavier than air and go down unless you heat them up. If they're not hot, they go right down, they sink down to the ground. So uh, what he dealt, dealt with was something to get you into a smoky room. So we call it a smoke safety, fire and, and smoke safety hood, technically speaking. So now, and he also invented the traffic signal, the one that was most beneficial and most uh, efficient at the time of his invention, saving perhaps millions of lives. Garrett Morgan, whose mother was a former slave, practically stumbled upon a career of invention. The seventh of 11 children, he was raised on a Paris, Kentucky farm, eventually moving to Cleveland, Ohio, where he opened up a sewing machine repair shop in 1907. By 1909, he employed 32 people in a prosperous tailoring business. One night, Morgan, an expert tinkerer, tried to solve a sewing problem. The friction of sewing machine needles left woolen thread scorched. Hoping to reduce the friction, he polished a needle, but was called to dinner by his wife. He hastily wiped some polish from his hands onto a swatch of, fi of wiry, fibered cloth on his workbench. After supper, he returned to work and discovered that the polish had straightened the fuzz of the cloth. He decided to see what the polishing fluid would do to hair. His neighbor had an Airedale, a large breed of terrier. With the dog owner's permission, he spread the fluid on the dog's fur. The dog returned home unrecognized by its owner. Next, Morgan spread the fluid on his own head. It straightened his hair. He packaged his magic formula as a cream and sold it through the G.A. Morgan Hair Refining Company, helping to change hairdos across America. But changing hair fashion was just the start of Morgan's new career. In 1912, he invented a precursor to the gas mask. Technically, he didn't, but okay. That's how this article is written. It was a breathing device consisting of a hood with a tube attached. The hood fit over the user's head. The tube went all the way down to the ground. Because dense smoke and fumes rise, the tube enabled the user to draw breaths from the layer of comparatively clear air at ground level. Morgan, the inventor, then became Morgan, the traveling salesman. Knowing that some white people would not buy his gas mask, his uh, safety hood, if they knew a black man had invented it, he masqueraded as Big Chief Mason, a full-blooded Indian. Big Chief gave a crowd a thrill at a New Orleans exhibition while wearing his gas mask, he strode into a tent filled with the smoke of burning tar, sulfur, formaldehyde, and manure, lingering for a long time inside and re-emerging 20 minutes later, miraculously still breathing. The crowd gasped. He sold a lot of these uh, safety hoods after putting it to a dramatic life-saving test in Cleveland. On July 24, 1916, a violent explosion ripped through a waterworks tunnel. Eleven workers were trapped five miles out into Lake Erie, 250 feet below the surface. Ten rescuers tried to save them, but all ten suffocated in a poisonous atmosphere of fumes, smoke, and dust. Morgan, his brother, and two volunteers put on gas masks and descended into the tunnel carrying out two survivors and four bodies. The heroic rescue, widely reported, uh, prompted fire departments across the country to order dozens of gas masks. Many departments, though, canceled their orders when they discovered that he was black. Unfazed, he continued inventing, and in 1923, he developed the automated traffic signal. The idea for a device that could manage traffic came to him when he witnessed a collision involving an automobile and a horse and buggy. See, at this time, 
uh, autom uh, automobiles, uh, you know, with the uh, combustion engines were on the roads. But at the same time, there were still a lot of horses and buggies, donkeys, burros, all kind of critters going all up and down the roads and all kinds of different carriages, et cetera, not to mention the trolleys and streetcars, et cetera. And so he witnessed this accident and, and decided on uh, that he would invent a automatic stop and go traffic signal system to be placed at the intersections. It was an early version of the traffic light that's now used worldwide. He sold the patent rights for the traffic signal to GE for $40,000 and began focusing on civic affairs. Uh, he died at 86 years old in 1963, having saved perhaps millions of lives. Now, when they talk about him being involved in civic affairs, they're talking about him uh, founding a or being the co-founder of an organization for colored men, a colored men's organization. But they, he also was the um, publisher, okay, publisher or co-publisher, I'm not sure which, of the Cleveland Plain Deal, no, excuse me, not the Plain Dealer, of the Call and Post newspaper in Cleveland, Ohio, which still operates today as Cleveland's major black newspaper. Uh, and so uh, this is the legacy that was left us by Garrett Augustus Morgan, and we all need to know more about him. Uh, there, needs, there needs to be a book written about him, actually, and his life. There is no, I have not been able to find a comprehensive biography on Garrett Morgan as of yet. So I'm hoping that somebody out there either knows of one or if not, then I may just have to write my own. So in the meanwhile, you have this story that we're providing you with tonight about Garrett Morgan that gives you some more insight and a few more details into the life of one of um, the most dynamic black inventors born and raised in the USA. So Garrett Augustus Morgan, remember the name, say his name. When you do your libations, make sure to pour a toast to Garrett Morgan. In the meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and uh, clock out right about now. But we do want to say something to all the little children out there. It's about time to take your little head and put it on your little pillow, on your little bed. Close those yeah, your eyes and wait on the sun to rise. And when you feel those sunbeams beaming down on your eyes, you'll know that it's time for you to rise and shine, old oh, chillin' of mine. This is how we do it. As for you adults out there, we already mentioned earlier that, of course, we need you to go ahead and give us a like if you're watching this on Facebook, or a thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. And then we're going to ask you, since it's the beginning of the month, to go ahead and make a donation to what we're doing here because we're making this our vocation. We're not doing this as a vacation. We're doing this as a vocation because guess what? That virus is still out there. The virus is still out there, and there are some people that would rather die or kill you either way, as opposed to doing something that they should be doing, like either taking a vaccine or if not, at least wear a mask when you're out in public, social distance, some very simple things that we could do. But some people would rather die than try to do better. So let's all try to do better. Make sure to send those donations this way. You can find a link right below any of our live streams. You can find it on your mobile by hitting notifications and look for the drop-down list. You can find it by going to our website, www.blakfacts.org. That's where you can find me and a place to make a donation to Black Facts Educational Research Incorporated. In the meanwhile, we'll be black tomorrow at noon with our first 
um, playlist for the weekend. We'll be doing playlists on the weekend. We always do that. So check out the playlist. We'll have some interesting things there on black inventors, etc. Peace out without a doubt, y'all. With justice, of course, because anything less mm -mm 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 -mm, ain't what we need. Thank <laughs> you.